Ugh, stupid little... Ew, gross. Disgusting. Oh, uh, hey there. Sorry I missed you for a sec. I've been so busy squashing these little pesky bugs. I guess you could say the theme of work this month was bug squashing, really putting the cleanup into Clean Up on Isle Goblin. <laughs> I've had lots of bugs piling up that I've just been writing down in this known bug section here, slowly haunting me as time passed over the past few months. So I finally quit my fly swatter and went to town on them. Before we jump in though, I've got a quick aside for the newbies here. My name is Matt, and I've been making a fun pixel art game with my brother Mike, where you play as a goblin and have to save your town from human invaders. The main gameplay loop will be quite similar to Stardew Valley, while mechanics are turn-based, like Crypt of the Necrodancer. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's squash some bugs. First up, I noticed that when enemies drop items and you move to a different area, the items linger, usually in the corner of the screen. This was a pretty easy fix, I was just never destroying them when the scene changed. I made an item drop manager that will, whenever you move to a new area, go through and find all the items you left behind. It'll then add it to a list that it'll save. We can then, later on, add a little lost and found area where you can pick up stuff you may have dropped or never picked up, especially if the items are important or rare. The next bug was more of a performance issue, and was definitely self-induced. So every time the player moves, all of the NPCs reevaluate their current meeting. They basically, one by one, look at the clock, look at where they're currently standing, and look at where they need to go. They'll calculate how long it takes them to get to where they need to be, and they'll decide if they need to start walking. If their meeting is far away, this is a costly operation. Not like super costly, but it uses a decent amount of pathfinding, which takes a bit of time. So when I had 15 NPCs in the area and they were all doing it at once, it was creating noticeable lag spikes. You can see here the game spazzes out whenever the player takes a step. The profiler here, which shows how much time everything is taking, shows massive spikes whenever I move. There are a few solutions here. I can make my pathfinding faster, I can do the checks less often, or I can offset them carefully. I ultimately want to do all three of these things, but for now I just did option three. I'm basically going to, instead of doing them all in one frame, do them one frame at a time. Basically, I'll have the player move and calculate one NPC. Then I'll wait a frame and do the next NPC. This way, they aren't all happening at the exact same instant, and I don't get those crazy lag spikes. That worked pretty well. You can see here that the visible lag is gone. While I do want to make my algorithm a bit faster, this is good enough for now. If I find we've got issues later on, I can always make the tweaks. Stepping away from bugs for a second, I also made a new tool for myself. The way I have it set up, each NPC has a massive list of meetings. This is what a meeting looks like. It's got some details about where the NPC should be, what time it is, etc. Meetings can also override other meetings if the proper conditions are met. For example, Ash might hang out at the lake every day at 2pm, but if the restaurant is rebuilt, he'll hang out there instead. So my issue is this. It gets super confusing, and I keep accidentally overlapping meetings. Here you can see what it looks like if I have two different NPCs scheduled at the same spot at the same time. They'll overlap and just behave horribly. If I have, say, 30 NPCs, it'll be impossible to keep track of who will be where and at what times. I don't want to have to keep track of it all on my own, so I ended up making this cool audit system. I can basically click this box to spit out a massive spreadsheet calendar of where each NPC will be on each day. You'll also check for meeting conflicts and report if any two people will try to be at the same place at the same time. So that isn't something that'll make it into the final game or anything, but it's super useful for me and I think it was worth the time. But anyways, back to game content. I had my girlfriend take a whack at the dungeon I made last devlog, and she seemed to enjoy herself, but I noticed something peculiar. She walked into this area, looked around, and left immediately. I was like, huh? But didn't say anything. Turns out it wasn't immediately clear to her that she could travel side to side here and that these were paths. Now this isn't me publicly shaming her, she's an avid gamer and very smart, but my walls just weren't clear enough. I ended up making them a bit shorter so you can see the floor. That's just one of those things that I thought was interesting. Once playtesting starts happening, we'll be able to find these issues more quickly. Speaking of which, if you're interested in playtesting at some point, feel free to hop in the Discord. I'll also be offering playtesting first to patrons, so make sure you check out the tiers on the Patreon. You also get cool stuff like access to my files so you can print art, tile sets that I make, and more. I'll leave the link below. The next thing I did was actually add in the starter area. We've got this little zone here for the player's house, and then this one here for the town. I'll be doing a quality sweep of everything and adding more decoration, I just wanted to get the bare bones in. I also went about plopping in all the NPCs. I gave them little sample meetings to start, and I gotta say, it's really fun to see them walking around the town. It adds a lot of life, and I like to see them going to and from their little meetings. They're super cute, I'm very excited to really nail down the town design so I can start molding their personalities through dialogue. You may also notice that a lot of the scenery looks fairly different. I decided I wanted this little goblin glade to encompass less enchanted forest vibes and more enchanted mushroom swamp vibes. I made the trees look a bit different, changed up the water, and altered the color scheme a tiny bit. I also made the rock walls taller and added this more interesting texture for them. 
I think I'm a bit happier with it now, but since this stuff is pretty quick to change, I may end up with further tweaks in the future. And speaking of trees, I made it so trees can be chopped down and leave stumps. Then the stumps can be destroyed for even more wood. Trees also have a random chance of dropping a sapling nearby on any given day. I have it so any plant can actually drop seeds and spread if I want them to, which I think helps bring the areas to life a bit more. If the player chops down a bunch of trees, they'll slowly grow back over time, even if they don't plant any new ones. We've also got some fun glowing mushrooms. They help bring the place to life at night. I think it's fun to see all the lights as you walk around. A lot of the goblins also use these mushrooms in their houses, which will certainly be craftable by the player for their own placement too. And with that everyone, we hit the end of this month's progress. It was a lot of behind the scenes stuff, and I've been a busy bee making YouTube videos, doing commissions and contract work, making fun murals that I can sell as prints, and also picking away at the tile set for the patrons to use. Ultimately, I've been living my best life over here, just pumping out pixel art as quickly as I can, and it's been a blast. This game is really starting to shape up, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Oh, and before I forget, we need to do our monthly wishlist check-in. As I've said before, wishlists are a good indicator of a game's future success, and people say 10,000 of them is a good number to have, at a minimum, when you launch. I like to share these numbers since it can be hard to know if you're in a good spot, so I enjoy the transparency to hopefully give a benchmark for others to see where I'm at. So this month I actually had some surprising results. I've been doing this thing where I draw one Smash Bros character every day and add it to a mural. This is mostly for my own enjoyment, but I also have a dream of selling prints and stickers at conventions, so I'm building towards that. I've gotten a fair amount of interest on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, and it seems people really like the Smash characters. But what I didn't expect is the game wishlists have been coming in more than twice as fast. I don't really even mention the game in these posts, but we continually get pretty high wishlist amounts just from those 20 minute Smash character drawings. My second highest spike ever was a spike of 84 when I posted a devlog or something, and yet a random little doodle of Pikachu that did well on Instagram resulted in a similar spurt. So I guess the moral of the story here is that posting good content daily is maybe more important than posting more detailed content weekly. Also, people really seem to like a series like this that they can look forward to. For example, there was this one girl on TikTok who got famous by singing What a Wonderful World by going through the whole thing one letter at a time. The end result was hot garbage, but she got tons of followers just because people couldn't wait to see what the next day would bring. I think I underestimated the power of that, and it's proving to be a good way to grow my following quite a bit. It's tough to get good interaction, so I was excited about this little breakthrough and wanted to share it with you all. There were days when I would only get 10 likes on each drawing, so I know what it's like to feel like things on those platforms go unnoticed in the massive vortex of pixel art out there. I think as long as you keep putting out quality stuff people enjoy and constantly trying new things, your socials will blast off before you know it. So hey, before you go, don't forget to hit all the magic YouTube buttons, wishlist style goblin to get notified about a release, and take a peek at the Patreon. I've also started my print and sticker collection, so don't be afraid to check out my store on my site. And with that, thanks everyone for dropping by, and I'll see you next time. Hello everyone, the time has come to shout out our eternally gracious patrons. I'd like to give a super special shout out to our goblin deity patrons for July 2022, namely Zachary Nice, Zach Fox, Sarah, Joey Mayer, Charles Philippic, TX Redcore, Jeffrey Harden, Riley Smith, Clinton Barr, Brett Hudson, Anna B, Julian Dickin, Jackson Singleton, Matthew Spencer, Jace, Hannah, Joseph Scobby, and Game Dev Beauty. You're all amazing and I appreciate all of the support.